So singleness is something that every marriage person, person should pursue. It should be their goal. Welcome to A Father's Heart with Dr. Phil Godot. Dr. Brenda Godot. We are a family-friendly church that teaches the Word of God so you can live an effective Christ-centered life. This is where the Word works when you work the Word. You work on your righteous position, your uh, holiness in your life. God says, now I can elevate you because you have the value in you to be able to promote the the blessing in your life. Y'all with me? And now, our A Father's Heart broadcast. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I say good morning, good morning, good morning. Good to see you. Turn me in your Bibles, if you will, please, to the book of uh, Ephesians, the sixth chapter of Ephesians, the sixth chapter. And we've been doing a teaching here uh, concerning the area of singleness and dealing with the whole aspect of living in his power as being single. Uh, living in his power as being single. We taught a lot of different things concerning the area of singleness and what we need to do and how God wants to respond to us. Because of the misconceptions of singleness, a lot of people have been ripped off, robbed, and uh, for many positive big things in their life because they did not understand nor did they know that singleness is something that you pursue It is something that you go after. It is not something to be avoided, that the very foundations of this whole planet uh, of God himself is based or wrapped around singleness. And singleness means to be separate, unique, and whole. We have placed singleness on the same basis of being unmarried. And therefore, people say, oh, you're still single because you're not married. But my my point is is that... uh, you shouldn't get married until you become single. And that singleness is something that every marriage should have. <coughs> I've been married to Brenda for 43 years, and she's, and amen, amen, and she's single, and I'm single. It takes two single people to make a marriage. And the problem is that some people want to get married, but they just unmarried, but they're not single. And if you marry somebody who's unmarried and not single, they're going to make your life miserable. And the problem why we have so many areas of divorce, so many areas of of confrontation and problems in relationships is because nobody has really on the level that they should pursue singleness. And when singleness is your goal, then elevation is God's goal. God is going to always elevate you when you are pursuing the area of being more single, separate, unique, and whole. So Brenda being single, me being single, married, and then we still excited about each other, still in love. 43 years later, things are still happening. Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. But I know people who've been married just a few weeks a few months, a few years, and unhappy, and they're praying that, they, that the husband or the wife won't even come home no more. Because, because they thought that that person was gonna make them happy. So nobody can make you happy but Jesus. I'm gonna try that again. Nobody can make you happy but Jesus. And if you're not fulfilled and complete and whole in him, then, and you're going to try to make some woman or some man make you happy, you're going to be disappointed. Amen. Thank you for that big amen. All right. So look with me in your Bible to the book of Romans, I mean Ephesians, Ephesians the sixth chapter. You got it, Brenda? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Ephesians 6 and 5, servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling in singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Okay, read it one more time. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling in singleness of your heart as unto Christ. 
No. Wow. Yeah. Now, now, see, some of y'all right there, you wouldn't make it in that verse because that, again, dealing with it says servants. So what were you saying about servants today? Well, some people will trip over just the word servant. Who are you calling a servant? You know, I'm not your slave. You can't tell me what to do. So if you, put, if you don't understand, you'll have that singleness of heart. You don't understand that there's going to be always somebody that is going to be speaking into your life. There's going to be authority that we all need to be submitted to. And it's a big thing that we, some people won't get past in, in their singleness because they, they're having a hard time being a servant. Paul said, Paul he was a great writer. He was a, I mean, God changed him. He had a great experience with awesome. God. But in the scriptures, you start off in many of his writings, he said, Paul, a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. He saw that servanthood was not a put down. Right. It was an opportunity for him to be used in a great way. Amen. So a lot of people won't get past th things in their life because of different backgrounds, different things we've been taught. But no, it's a great thing to be a servant and understand what it's all about. I serve this man of God. Say, you know? say that, say that yeah. one more time. Get that, get that on camera. Amen. <laughs> no, I, because of my singleness of heart, I understand that I can serve him. I can feed him. I can serve him. I can take care of him. And, and he turns around and he serves and takes care of me. Right. Because we understand the under, what it is to be a servant. So, you know, I really am praying that everybody will grasp what this is because in that scripture it says with the singleness of heart. It has to be a heart thing. And you have to understand that a lot of people won't get past things in their life because they don't want nobody telling them what to do. They feel like that they know enough and all of us know some things, but none of us know it all. Principles determine what God is going to do and what we do is we determine what God's not going to do if we don't operate according to the principle. So I can never be mad at God. I, I just didn't function to do the principle that was available. Give, and it'd be given back to you. So if I give love, and if I give my time, if I, whatever I do, it's going to come back to me even more than what I gave it out to me. In, in every area of relationship, every area, I give mercy, mercy comes back. I give kindness, kindness comes back. I give love, love comes back. I give forgiveness, forgiveness comes back. But if I give anger, anger comes back. If I give bitterness, bitterness comes back. If I show judgment, then no mercy comes back. Judgment comes back to me. So it's a major principle in relationship is that I don't go into the relationship to get. I go into the relationship to give. Because of my singleness of heart, I understand that I can serve him, I can feed him, I can serve him, I can take care of him, and, and he turns around and he serves and takes care of me. Right. Because we understand, the under, what it is to be a servant. So, you know, I really am praying that everybody will grasp what this is, because in that scripture it says, with the singleness of heart. It has to be a heart thing, and you have to understand that a lot of people won't get past things in their life because they don't want nobody telling them what to do. They feel like that they know enough, and all of us know some things, but none of us know it all. Well, in the same, in the same verse, it says, um, uh, to be obedient to them that uh, are your masters according to the flesh. Uh, and, and the problem why a lot of people lose their jobs, lose relationships, because of the area of not being single. Exactly. So all of a sudden, they'll be praying for a job, believing for a, a, a job or finances and stuff, and God blesses them with the exact what thing that they want, but then because they're not single, they, that means they're still insecure, got inferiority complex, very sensitive, you know, and they always think somebody after them, all kind of issues. Then as soon as some, the boss or somebody on the job starts attacking them, they're ready to walk off the job. And I've known more people who have walked away from jobs they were believing for and then they're crying because they don't, they don't have no money or they don't have relationships and have lost relationships because, because of not having a singleness of heart. Look, look what he says here. Servants, obey them that, have, that are your masters are according to the flesh. Therefore, you have a responsibility on that job is to be able to understand that when you get a job, 
start a business, get married, get into relationships, there's going to be warfare that's going to go along. And you might not like the way they said it to you or whatever, but you, you where God wants you to be as long as you can maintain a proper attitude. But when you lose your attitude because of your insecurity, because you never took the time to really get into the word, to build your relationship with God, you now you're letting the enemy steal every good thing in your life. So as soon as you get into a relationship God got for you, you can't keep it because you, you, you start picking and fault finding and looking at things. And then all of a sudden now you, you walked away from that relationship. You walked away from that marriage, walked away from that job because you never came into singleness. Because listen to me, you can't hurt me when I'm single. You can't hurt me because I'm already unique and fulfilled and whole in him. So you, you can't make me feel insecure. You can't make me act, in, act out of character because I'm already, I don't need you. Really, you need me. And you know, we've been on this for a few weeks, and this is, uh, according to the leading of the Lord, I believe this is our last week. But I'm just really, truly believing that you guys are grabbing a hold of this because it's really the foundation of who we are. When we get this, it's going to be, you're going to be able to apply this to every area. Every message that we preach from now on is still, if you're not single, right, right. it's not going to work in your life. The right, word won't right, work. So right, you really right. want to get this foundation that you are complete in God. You are separate, you're unique, you're whole, whatever uh, category you're in, whatever marital situation you're in, whatever right. position God has you, when you are somebody, you are separate, unique, and whole. And if you grab a hold of that, you will not, you will not falter because he will be your all in all. Because you get your every, substance from him. Because every married person should be pursuing singleness. Exactly. Because if they got problems in that marriage, they got challenges is because not of the other person is more of them because you won't have all the issues if you were came in and so so singleness is something that every marriage person person should pursue it should be their goal are you looking to reboot and recharge during the week well join dr philip george goodell for his new tuesday morning bible study at 10 a.m Take a break from your daily routine and dive into God's Word with our Tuesday morning Bible study with Dr. Goodell. If you are going through tough times in your personal life and need someone to pray for you right now, call our prayer counselors. They are standing by waiting to speak with you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week at 800-299-0593. You don't have to deal with your problems alone. We are here to pray and agree with you that God will intervene on your behalf and turn your situation around. Or if you know someone who needs help, have them call our prayer team right now at 800-299-0593. We're here for you. I noticed in that scripture in, in, in verse 5, in Ephesians 6 and 5, right in the middle of there, before it talked about the singleness, it's letting you know it's, it's going to be a little trying for it because it says, with fear and trembling. Yeah. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling. So it's not like it's going to be real easy to do. You're going to have to have some reverence there. You're going to have to have some accountability. You know, you're going to have to go through something. But because your heart is single, you can make it. But then it says, says a singleness of heart. Yeah. See, because out of your heart flows the issues of life. So what's in you is going to come out of you. And so you, you say, well, I don't like the way they treat me, or I don't like this, and, and I don't like that. Well, the reason why you're getting what you're getting is because what's inside of you. If your change was in you, your change was coming out around you and all of what's happening around you. You can change your situation by changing you. That's why God puts the demand, the demand upon you to change. When you're, un, when you're unmarried, you're demanding everybody else to change. When you're single, you just discontent. You don't, you don't care if they change or not because you are already fulfilled. So look with me in your Bible also to the book of Colossians. Colossians, um, the third chapter of Colossians. Mm -hmm. 3 and 20. 
Colossians 3, verse 22. And look what it says here in Colossians 3, 22. Go ahead. Servants, obey in all things your masters, here we go again, according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. Mm, 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 mm. In singleness of heart, fearing God. So again, here that, that servant thing is again, and here's these masters. You know, that's why we got a lot of children that are having a hard time receiving any kind of correction any kind of direction in their life because even the adults have problems with being called a servant well. or being, uh, 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 having a master over them telling you what to do. We got a whole society of people nowadays that don't feel like somebody should be able to tell them. We used to say that, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. We used to correct children when they got out of line. Mama not, might not be there and we have a lot of aunties around or whatever we call ourselves but we could correct children. Right now, we got a situation where a lot of children will step up to you and they'll just tell you, you're not the boss of me. Y'all heard that before? You're not the boss of me. You can't tell me what to do. No, we have to help our children as well as ourselves to, to be able to receive direction, to receive instruction, to, be, to understand that there will be masters, that we are servants, and because we're single, because we know who we are, we can handle somebody. Hey, like Pastor said, when he got his first job, they could talk to him. Well, not his first job, but one of his jobs, when he started getting some money, because he had some jobs with someone wasn't paying nothing. <laughs> but when he got one, when they were really paying something, he said, basically, when he saw that first check, they could call him anything they wanted to call him. And, no. they, and they was calling it. They was calling it different things. Right, they was calling it too. But when you know who you are, you don't matter what. No, no, you ain't going to steal what God has for me. I don't care how you come at me or what you think you're trying to do to me. I know who I am, and I'm not who you say I am, but I am who God says I am. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, again, 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 uh, these verses are sort of hard hitting. It says, servant, obey in all things your master or your boss, your pastor, your leader, according to, uh, uh, according to the flesh, yes. not being men pleasers and just doing it when they're around. But it says, but in singleness, in that separate and unique wholeness of heart, fearing, reverence, and honors, honoring God. Now, you know, black people, y'all ever heard of them? <laughs> black people? Black people, black people have problems. Black people have problems. They had a movie called The, the Diary of a Mad Black, Mad Woman. Black Woman. Amen. And, um, because, uh, and the reason why is black women get messed over by insecure, un, uh, uh, unmarried men that mess over them and manipulate them, and they got attitudes. And I understand that. Black people in general have issues too because of slavery, because of the area of apartheid, of dealing with the area of, of Jim Crow and all of the different things that happen in that area, dealing with family breakups and the whole area of, of fatherless generations and welfare and all the different things that have attacked us as a people. And therefore, what the enemy does is he, he uses that. And so a lot of African-American or black people have some major insecurities, major problems with moving their life forward because they have never moved their life forward in Christ on the level that they should and didn't become single. Because listen to me, as Brenda said, I was the first black engineer for Southern Pacific Railroad. And, and I'm just going to say it like it is. Those white people did not want me on that job. Amen. And y'all understand what I'm saying? They did not want me on the job. But once I saw my paycheck, I got a new sense of singleness in my life. Got a new sense of singleness. And what nobody going to run me off that job because I saw something I hadn't seen before and it was called moolah. And so they called me all kind of names. I mean names that I normally would fight you over, but I wouldn't fight them. They weren't going to draw me into nothing. I wasn't going to go that way because I needed that job. I got to take care of this woman. Amen. 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 
So I'm just saying a mature singleness brings forth maturity and development in your life to help you to be able to really experience God's greater plan for your life. And that's why it's something that needs to be talked about, as Brenda was saying, on a regular basis, all the time, on a regular basis, because you all have to pursue it. If you want to have healthy, vibrant, exciting relationship, the worst thing you could do is get, get ahead of God's plan and jump into a relationship with somebody who's not single. Because if you marry somebody or get into a relationship with somebody that's single, they're going to make your life miserable. And that's in business deals and different things that you're, you're going through. You want to seek God in everything. When you're single, you know where your help comes from and you're running to God for direction in your life. So whatever you're going to, let's put God first. You, you recognize you are single. You're separate, unique, and whole. You're holding God. So go to God for everything so that he can show us how to just go through it because he made us in his image. And after so look with me in Romans, the eighth chapter, Romans 8, 29, Romans 8, 29, Romans 8, 29. And uh, again, uh, if you don't know how much single you are, then you won't know how much singleness you can give. In other words, you can't help somebody else if you don't even know where you are. And most people have never prepared themselves. So I'm going to be doing some teaching on, on dating, on dating. Because I have a real problem with kids trying to date. A real problem with babies who need, or children who need to be still children trying to jump into relationships when they need, they need, to, need to be able to grow up and be a, a child and an adult themselves before they jump into adult relationship. Well, I ain't getting too many amens on, on that area. And some of you in here right now, you, you got issues today and, and it's because you jumped into some premature relationship. I got one hand that went up. The rest of y'all, rest of y'all in denial. Now that you have heard the word, I'm asking you to open the door to your heart and ask Jesus Christ to come in. So you do that now. And if you ask to invite him into your life, he says, Lord Jesus, I open the door to my heart and invite you into my life as my Lord and Savior. You do that, Christ is in your life. We're shouting with you, rejoicing with you. And so I'd just like for you to email us or write us or call, or you could uh, uh, get a hold of us through Twitter or Facebook at Philip Godot at Philip Godot, Twitter or, or Facebook. And I tell you what, we're going to respond back to you. We're excited with you. Looking forward to hearing more from you. Any prayer requests also, okay? Whether you're married, single, widowed, or divorced, relationships play an important role in your success in life. Not developing good, healthy relationships can keep you from experiencing God's best. And relationships have to be built. They don't just happen overnight. And some people get in a hurry to jump into some relationship. And if the devil want to destroy you, he'll bring a person into your life. But when God wants to bless you, he'll bring a person in your life so that you need the maturity to be distinguished. Is this the right or the wrong person? The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is designed to be a place of grace. A place where the grace of God is poured out. The FCMI Business Conference is just days away, and we have great workshops just for you. This year's theme is, get up and grow your insights, concepts, and ideas. It's happening this July. Some of the business growth workshops include, effective social media for business, business and ministry makeovers, plus a business women's panel, and a luncheon with our special guest speaker from Hollywood, the co-star of the Oscar-winning film, Forrest Gump. Anyway, like I was saying, Shrimp is the food of the sea. You can barbecue it, boil it, broil it. We're also featuring our heavyweight anointed speakers. Oh, I need you to hear me. Our faith is ordained to keep us in the dimension where we're getting favor we don't deserve. You didn't get what I just said. It's supposed to keep us in the place where we are experiencing power that we haven't earned and walking in favor that we have not merited. And for the youth, 
we'll have our career preparation workshops featuring resume writing, mock job interviews, and how to choose the right college. For the children, it's discovering God's plan for you. It's a career day for the little kids and tons of fun with arts and crafts, water sports fun, and cool nightly entertainment. For more information, visit our website and register now. Men, it's time to man up. Men, join us this summer for the Real Men's Conference in Sacramento, California. We are going to dive deep into issues only men can relate to, from relationships to career moves to the secret sins most men don't want to discuss in public. We get challenged a lot more than people think that we get challenged. More temptation. I don't know if you are a real man, but I'm talking to the real men. We expect to see you at the Real Men's Conference getting built up on the Word of God this August. See you there. You don't want to miss this one, guys. This is not for the ladies. It's the Real Men's Conference in Sacramento, California. It's time to man up, men. For more information, just log on to our website or call us. Be there. Ladies, this summer, join Dr. Brenda Godot for our women's clinic. It's a spiritual retreat. We are going to dive into the Word of God and focus on issues only we get. We'll also take time to get recharged and re-energized. Take a break from the everyday hustle and bustle and join us for Women's Clinic. Register now. Welcome to our home and yours. Looking for a great night out this weekend? Join us for our Saturday evening service, 6 p.m. at Calvary Christian Center North in the chapel. That's Saturday night at 6 p.m. Join us. Dr. Brenda K. Godot of Calvary Christian Center in Sacramento, California is asking you to save the date. We're coming to Atlanta, Georgia, August 11th and 12th. It's the Love Your Life Conference hosted by Pastor Patricia Gregory. Ladies, this is a tailor-made conference just for you. Join us for two days of anointed word and fellowship. It's in Atlanta in August. Just go to our website for more information. Subscribe to us on YouTube and see the latest videos from Drs. Philip and Brenda Godot. It's easy. I am the God of more than enough. I am a El Shaddai God. I'll bring you back and then I'll lift you up. Just log on to YouTube and type in Philip Godot Ministries and then just click subscribe. The video messages are right there on your screen. And if you're out and about, we also have a smartphone app so you can catch the Godots on the go. The app is easy to find. Just search Calvary Christian Center for both Android and iPhone users. Stay informed, stay connected, and stay encouraged on YouTube and with our amazing app. It's easy to become a partner. Just log on to our website and you'll receive special video messages and updates. Thank you, partners.